Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to the Morning Madness podcast. This is your co-host, Carlos, along with my other co-hosts, Victory and TJ. All right, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Morning Madness podcast. Now, do do? it has been not one, but two weeks since our last filming together, and we've had a pretty long, long week. We've had plenty of time to come back and... Uh, you know, figure out what it is we're doing here in this new studio. We've had a lot of issues. The last episode that went up, we sounded like we were underwater a little bit. <laughs> um, heavy apologies should not be the issue. This uh, should not be the case this time. We've, we've got everything figured out. And uh, so now we're good and set to go into motion. Yes, so, indeed. There's a lot of shit that's been happening since we took that one week hiatus. Yeah. 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 It mm-hmm. feels like three weeks. <laughs> yeah, that's for like three weeks. Last podcast, I think, was like the last time we sat down to have like a conversation, conversation since then, right? Yeah. Yeah, true. Jeez. I feel like I've gone through, I've crawled through an entire war zone since then. Because, <laughs> <laughs> damn it, I even forgot. It's because Thursdays is like packed for all of us. Because yep. not only do we have this in the morning, and we're like, what, recording usually for like two and a half hours? Mm-hmm. We do this till about and 10. And then we have. Fucking uh, what class? Yeah, yeah, we have all of our classes. All day. Yeah. I know. And then anything <laughs> else? And then we have our practice tonight. Yes, that's, I, <laughs> that's super oh, fucking late. I forgot. It's during my work time, so. Huh? <laughs> I, I'm there for the first thirty minutes, and then that's my work time. So yeah. it's quite a it's quite a day. Is that gonna be like that every week? Yeah. But oh, nice. I mean, we did the vote. I saw the majority was tick- tipping that way already. So. It was oh. like, Made sense. I mean, we can change it if it's need be. No huge deal, realistically. Uh, when you look at it on the paper, it re- like. Well, because as, as long as like you can show up to like Sunday practice, of course, and stuff like that. I never miss it for the world. Gotcha. Ne- never would never without a good reason. <laughs> okay, so our topic this week. Are we just gonna strip straight into it? There's well, a I lot of I, shit that's like been like. You let's know. see for our pop culture news segment, as we like to call it. Does anybody Oops. have anything? We want to discuss really quickly. <laughs> Do we have anything to discuss? <laughs> what's, uh, what's his face um, that plays uh, Eddie Brock in the Venom movie? Yeah, Topher Grace seemingly No, confirms not that fucker. Not, 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 what's it like? <laughs> that he's in Spider-Man 3 First, with the most Alpha Chad response. Oh my god, wait, what? So there was a Reddit <laughs> Ask Me Anything with Topher Grace. I believe he's promoting one of his new TV shows. And someone asked him, will your Venom be in Spider-Man No Way Home? And to pull up the quote, um, so so yeah, so so for Grace like went on Reddit, saw like this post, and decided to comment like a pretty detailed like you know what if scenario. This for, man you know. says, "Please keep it between us, but yes, I am in it." The plot starts with Peter Parker, Tom Holland, bum that everyone knows his identity, and then some crazy shit happens with Doctor Strange and Doctor Octopus comes into his dimension. Then Electro and then Green Goblin hop out of one of those energy circles and they're like, it's spider stomping time. Then Tom Hardy and I pop out and battle each other and I win, obviously. (laughs) It's not even like a fight. I just kick his ass immediately. Not to give too much away, but there are also some actors from original 70s Spider-Man show, Aquaman and Batman crossover. (laughs) And thanks to Disney Han Solo's ghost from Rise of Skywalker and that Eve robot from WALL-E. Again, please keep this between us. (laughs) That's like the best way. That's you the best way to handle it. Yeah. So I was gonna say he Virgin is. Virgin Andrew Garfield. I'm in it. Topher because Grace. I, I'm in it. Uh, I'm in it, and it's my movie. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? I win. I'm the best with him. Um, is it is it rumored or confirmed that there's a Daredevil cameo in this movie? There's probably uh, somewhere halfway through because there were in the new Spider-Man sub- movie or the new Venom movie. The new the new Spider-Man. Spider-Man. They're pretty substantial. Rumors I, circulating the, his appearance and that he was on set, and there was a lot of stuff to point to that. Really, but, I'm so, I'm what's going like I'm, the shit I'm seeing. It's like it's going completely like the opposite side. Here's the thing, when it comes to actors denying involvement in a project, people a lot of people are acting like this is the first time like we've seen actors do this, and this has gone all the way back to like. Black Panther, I mean, even Captain Marvel. Like, people, there were so many rumored performances for Captain Marvel, right? They were like, they're going to go with Natalie Dormer, and they're going to go with um, this unknown that was a stunt double in Age of Ultron. They're going to go with Brie Larson. And they would ask everyone, and everyone would say no. Brie Larson said, I have no idea what you're talking about. (laughs) The actress for She-Hulk, Tatiana Maslany, 
again, a week before they confirmed she was in the show, she said, I don't know what She-Hulk is and why you want me in it, but I'm, I haven't gotten an email about that. <laughs> Next week, we're so, casting Tatiana Maslany as She-Hulk, uh, Haley Steinfeld with Hawkeye. They're like, oh, are you? It. Dude. People like, talk shit on her music. She can fucking act. She, she's a, she's good. I really like her. Wait, she's a musician. Yeah, mm. she has a couple. Of, she has a couple of like sing, like singles and stuff. I like thought that. she made like that hit TV show in the seventies. Uh uh-uh. uh, home. What's going on? She's like Hale, my Hale, age, the Haley Seinfeld show, right? You no. know. Oh no. <laughs> right you, with Kramer and all that. <laughs> that is <laughs> god damn it. <laughs> and they make the joke about the planes and stuff. <laughs> First of all, no one should be making jokes about planes in September. <laughs> oh, it's September, huh? <laughs> it's still September. Jeez. I haven't been keeping track of times or dates in so long. It's and this week November. I've had to juggle so much. Um, all the people in town that, I've, that I have to work with right and now are uh, are really cooperative, actually. So I've, I've got a couple things set up, which are nice. But did you guys know that shooting ranges... Uh, at least as far as I know around this area, uh, is all based on the local gun laws in the state. Yeah, that's yeah. A, that's every gun range. I did not know that. See, I'm used to having to be 21 no matter what. Depends. because uh, It depends on the what, it depends on the firearm. Because uh, you can be, you can be, I forget what the ages are, so I'm not going to make an idiot of myself, but you can be a certain age and handle this one and a certain age and handle another one based on what I have heard. Uh, one of my residents um, texted me in the group chat for the room and he was like Carlos is it cool if I have a Tommy gun in here <laughs> <laughs> he invited me Why to go to the, want a Tommy gun in the first place? they're so like useless so that when the when the RAs come for cleaning checks you can go <laughs> you can stand at the doorway and go <laughs> I would be honest if someone's holding a Tommy gun to my face I'm like I all I gotta do is like just go that way a couple more feet and it's not like no, I just maybe one right. out of like the fucking what 30. are you gonna do <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna do I'm going to give him an offer you can't refuse. (laughs) That's what I'm going to do. Well, I'm going to give you an offer for me to walk away. And then, and then you start fighting. The farther I get away from you, the less accurate that gun becomes. Um, the, no, he invited me to go to a firing range and his roommates and everyone was like, no, I'm good. (laughs) No. Why you say no? Well, I just, I didn't have time that day, but I was, um, and then I was like, wait a minute, can I even? Go to a fire range, and I looked it up, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I yeah. guess I could." Uh, I think I can. F- I, I can handle any assault, well, not any, but most of the assault rifles, but not a pistol. Really? Mm-hmm. What's the clause for that? You have to be twenty-one for a pistol, I believe. Really? To conceal it, and, you know, whatnot. Yeah. Oh, for concealed carry. Got you. Well, just an for assault it. rifle, you cannot conceal. Are they called? I'm pretty sure. They I'm, don't, sure I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure you could. <laughs> It have wouldn't be done well. Anything? Have you ever shot anything? No. Yeah. Have you, you guys shot a gun before? I yeah, have a couple times. Um, I really want to. Re- like, like at a like at a range properly. Like, I want to. I want to learn how to properly and safely fire a gun because I feel like if the time ever came, zombie apocalypse is coming. Pretty yeah, soon. zombie apocalypse. <laughs> it doesn't have to be a zombie apocalypse. I hear a noise in the night. We'll go check it out. <laughs> the purge. You know, I'm suburban going John invasion. Wick in that See, yeah, I would love to see. I'm gonna have to go back to this range a couple times, so uh, I would love to just make it a normal thing, yeah. because or, or like not, maybe not a normal thing, but like something it that gets we, I do with people. It does. Like, yeah. it gets, it's an expensive like, hobby. Rental, bull, like ammunition and shit. Right. Time on the range, well, like, keep in mind, really I'm not like a huge gun nut. Like I, I'm just dude going to the range for the to know that I have that skill. And the crux of the video is: does doing shooting ranges in VR improve real life aim? Um, Actually, yeah. There's what's up. There's been a lot of. Uh, from what I can tell, the answer is yes. But uh, I was gonna say I did a paper on that a couple years ago. Really? Yeah. Um, because what they do for officers now, um, they have a place up in Salt Lake, and it's kind of like a VR set training simulator though too. Ah, uh, see, um, they probably use like the force tube and pro tube attachments that give you real recoil and stuff, which is something I'm looking into for a second version of that video to try to really hone. The I don't skill. know the equipment that they're using, but it was, it's a, uh, like a VR simulator like sort of thing that they use for officers for training, and they have you like you can like with a each person pays like eighty bucks. And then they both like they put you in like a bunch of different scenarios that cops go through and shit. And like it ranges from like com- like noise complaint to like school shooter. Mm-hmm. 
in mm. every in like literally everything in between. And the goal, I've, uh, of, I've seen the school shooter one. Yeah, no, it's it, it gets intense and shit. There was, I think, when I was doing that, uh, my stupid ass was that there's a part where so it's divided by three screens. So um, like mainly in front of like so mainly in front of you and like towards the sides and stuff. Um, and there's a part where I think me and my partner at the time I went with a bunch of buddies. This is like years ago. Pass by and like it, guess what it was like one of the shooters days. it was one of the shooters and shit but he was like running within the crowd uh-huh. and he was like like pocket like not pocketing oh but he was holding the shotgun like on his side and shit Yikes. so and like and like no like, it, these got real and these aren't meant to like train officers and shit like the different types of scenarios there's even one where like it was a noise complaint started out as a noise complaint and then escalated into like woman running out with a knife and then now we have the shooter yeah interesting oh see. it's <clears throat> it's crazy like the amount of the amount of training that these guys go through, and just real world situations. Yeah, the, what's all in my opinion? The yeah, shit they see, and what looks like they're well. I want to say that some, a lot of the cops get a bad name because of the bad cops and shit. But that's you. You get your bad employees. No, I mean I I agree. I mean I, I there's a lot of people in my area that are cops and they're they're great. They're wonderful. But it's just, it's just a. It's a, it's a systemic it's a, it's a, it's a, issue yeah, it's that systemic needs issue. to be addressed, not today, but we'll, we'll maybe we'll have a, a day about that. So thinking about ca- cops, uh, there's so do you guys remember Dirk Dastardly from Wacky Races? I do. The, the guy who looks v- undoubtedly I know what like, show you're talking about, never does. See, he looks it. like a cop. He looks like Dr. Doofenshmirtz if Dr. Doofenshmirtz was a cop. Um, he was also in the Scoob movie, the new Scooby-Doo movie, the live action, yeah. like the Mm-mm. 3D animated one. Um, call me Dick. He he's a hilarious character, and I only know of him through the few times I'd seen Wacky Races on like Boomerang in the morning. Um, but you know, just to figure to find a way to jump on over. What is with uh? You ever notice that there's a serious weird issue with ar- the archetypal uh, bad guys having huge fucking noses? I think it has to, to come from the cartoon industry having no, something no, against it, Jewish people, right? <laughs> it depends who you ask. If it's Hanna Barbera, yeah, sure. Yeah, <laughs> Hanna Barbera is like that's. Yeah. Dick, I'm pretty sure Dirk Dastardly is a Hanna Barbera character. Yeah, so. I think so too. Um, dude, I don't know. Like, it's. I think that I definitely think that's like a cartoon industry as to why. No fucking idea <laughs> why. Because like you just have these things in the industry that's just like that that are just kind of like there and like without it. Just, they just don't work <laughs> stuff like that like johnny bravo's entire character dude no johnny bravo fucking now is like <laughs> pepe Le Pew, johnny bravo like they're like they're done now those guys cannot like anyone that just i get i will bet fucking money on this right now there's gonna be a fucking there's gonna be someone out there right now like a producer who's like oh let's bring back let's remake johnny bravo and shit and it's just like Whoa. and they'll be like the oh. rock as no, Johnny not even Bravo. that. Like, not even that. They're gonna like fucking like make him completely John Cena he... as Johnny Bravo. You just give him the long hair. Realistically, he's that big. Like, he is that big. Like, not, he, not, not after, anymore, watching, not after watching, not after watching, after watching Suicide, Suicide Squad, Squad, I would say he's a good. His Johnny muscles Bravo. literally look like they are like he was born that way. <sighs> Why would we want to give John Cena Johnny Bravo? Though? See, I like him though. Like, I like John, John Cena. Cena's actually really like, likable, the, especially he, when he was speaking past Chinese. his WWE career. Like, that was pretty funny. Uh, I mean, when he bent over backwards for China, I don't know about that one. See, okay, and, that, and that's an even interesting topic. When he's to, holding like, the ice you know, cream, that video, he's just staring into the camera. <laughs> See, uh, lots of people like were shitting on him, or like, oh, like you. Know, I understand like, like, China's that. a huge market, but well, like you gotta understand though too. Like this guy is working for a fucking multi-billion-dollar company and shit, and then like, at the, and at the end of the day, he needs his paycheck. Just attitude adjust to the p- the people in the corporate chairs, dude, bro. <laughs> I I watched his uh, his returning match against uh, I think it was Roman Reigns and shit. I watched the highlights and stuff, dude. Homeboy can still do it. Get, I can get imagine because like this, like these guys are taking bumps. Don't forget this guy. This guy has been through a lot. He went through three Fred movies. Okay, like WWE's <laughs> nothing. Nowadays. You know what's funny though, is that you know in regards to China and everything. Shang Chi is performing worse than most any Marvel that. movie ever in China because they just don't like it. Oh, it's it's like a, just a quality thing. I well, thought it was. Just, a... they, they, well, there's also a political thing because Simu Liu made some comments about China at some point. He, he was like bad mouthing the Chinese government, 
which is a big no-no for the for the entertainment market in China because it's almost like a hush hush don't say anything about the government will just promote the movie. You're right. Yeah. It's doing worse than Black Panther, which by China standards and this is just I'm not like trying to be funny or anything. This is just a thing they do not like African Americans. Yeah. And so, I mean, look historically at every single movie poster ever with black they people on it. They take them off. They, like, take them off and they make them well. small. Black Panther, they, like, had to, everything was him with his mask on um, and no other supporting characters or just the white ones. And the one white supporting character in Black Panther. It's just a poster of the one white guy from Black Panther. <laughs> he's like, not even in it for that long, too. He's in it for that scene in that's how you it, market Korea it, and mm-hmm, shit. Mm-hmm. Like, when the, like, the club stuff starts yeah. going down. That's the only part that he's in. Yeah. And then he don't see him for the rest of the movie. Three white supporting characters. We got uh, Martin Freeman, yeah, Andy Serkis. I wouldn't consider him white. Oh, you know how funny it'd be to see just a poster with those three on it and have it titled <laughs> and Black Stan Panther. Lee. <laughs> 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 See, no, the thing is, right, yeah. now, China's the China's movie there. market has always been weird because they, what was it? What did what recently did gangbusters in China for no fucking reason? Wasn't at it all. the Demon Slayer movie? Yes, um, that most one well, makes I guess sense, to be fair though, though that's that coming one out of China. Yeah. Makes sense. Oh, sorry. Oh no, because it's Cena the opposite. <laughs> it's actually the opposite, you guys. Space Jam One had a bit of a uh, attachment in China back in the day, I believe. Not too sure on that one. The reason I saw this though is because of a tweet that I read yesterday, um, before this, when I was looking up stuff for cartoons. Um, turns out, actually, Space Jam Two is blocked in China. Like it hasn't even aired in China. Space Jam Two should have never been in production in the first place. Space Jam Two is the world's most egregious Warner Brothers commercial. Or HBO Max commercial. There are characters in that movie that have absolutely no place or right to be in that movie. Yeah. I don't know why LeBron I would take... James. I thought LeBron's yeah. acting wasn't that bad. He acted better than Michael did back in the first Space Jam when you really compare I would say it's literally, it's, it's on the it's, same it's, level. Yeah. Like, well, they're both athletes Michael's... acting, right? Yeah. Have you guys read or seen or heard about Michael Jordan's original... Space Jam script? There was an original. You see the end no, a lot? I haven't. Did. But it didn't involve it was, not Bill Murray? <laughs> it it was wild. It was it, it so it was They had to have like had to like minimize some stuff where he couldn't remember and shit, because you know how actors are like they can program see their brain remember like paragraphs and shit. They probably had to get a bunch of lines where like his dialogue was supposed to be this and now it's like this. <laughs> I don't remember where it is. I think I have some of it saved, but, but probably no. not. But the original script was, he wrote it, I believe while he was high or something, doing yeah. some shit, and he wrote it. And it was a pervasive, just perverted, high-octane thrill ride of him <laughs> battling drug abuse and a, the, coming to terms with the fact that he doesn't love his son all while trying to play basketball to save reality with the Looney Tunes. Oh, wait, is this LeBron's take? No, or this Michael's? is Michael Michael Jordan. had a kid at the time? No, in the story, it was in, like in, in, the, in, the, story, in the movie. Gotcha. But that and is so like... It was, it was really weird. So Warner Brothers approached him and his a- or his agent and was like, hey, we want to do <laughs> hey, this movie. What the fuck? Um, <laughs> and so they were still in the process of getting the script done. And he was like, well, I can write one. And he did. And my God, some of the things in that in that script... Like Lola, he has a an affair with Lola Bunny, um, but makes Does Bugs Mike, Bunny did watch. Knew this was a PG did, uh, like, no, no, he. I, I guess he didn't put two and two together well, when they said you and Looney Tunes. Did well to be fair. Did Who Framed Roger Rabbit come out before this? Yeah, but like in like, yeah. the, like, but like in like you know like that that like that movie. Yeah, but in Who Framed way, Roger Rabbit, like, way before. Right, so maybe like when he first thinks like, oh, you know, for like Looney Tunes live actions, like this is the last movie that did oh, that, and he's like, maybe it'll be a more adult, raunchy film sense. like that. That makes sense. Yeah, but let like, me let me find turning because like, Who Framed like, Roger Rabbit kind of fucked, dude. Like I went back and watched yes. it. The ending scarred me as a kid for a little while when he turns like when they melt him with acid. I just remember yeah. seeing the girl in the red dress and knowing very young I was straight. I never liked her. I don't get it. What? Dude, uh-uh. she was fine, bro. <laughs> okay, so I'm trying to... 10 out of 10 on Yelp. What definitely? <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's There's even no fun. Way. It's, it's even... uh, maybe it's just because, maybe I just thought she was tall or too, like, I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe... She's too white for you? No. Uh, I think it was, she's, I think it was just, maybe she was too, like, adult mature for me at, like, what, seven? Dude, I just looked at her and I looked at the rabbit and I'm like, 
girl, what the fuck are you doing with your life? <laughs> I think I found it. Yep. Michael Jordan's first draft of oh. Space Jam. God. Oh, hell yeah. This is this is gonna be a good exclusive clip. Let's let's hear what this fever dream would have been like. There's there's a part where he explains when he sees Lola Bunny for the first time and gets a a massive erection. Um, See, no, that was par for the course in cartoons back then. If the people are still Aluga, listening, thank Hong you for uh, stick, sticking with us as we yeah, talk about. Yeah, thank you for getting through the affair with Lola Bunny. Uh, part. One of, one of the characters it. kills himself in the movie, and then Bugs Which Bunny. Which fucking character? Uh, well, like the best friend character, and then Bugs Bunny laughs best about it. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Bugs Bunny what? Laughs. <laughs> <laughs> okay, never mind. I like this screen. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll never forget. I, I I don't know where it went, but it was um it was a where he calls L- Lola Bunny tries to like console him after losing a practice match, and he's just like, "Get the fuck away from me, bitch." <laughs> hey, bro, that's an AI treatment, bro. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. And the, there's like annotations on it as well. Oh God. He walks away. Lola sheds a tear. She shouldn't have led Michael on like that. Annotation from the producer. She did what now? <laughs> <laughs> Lola Bunny, so, I love so you. Good. <laughs> it says, Lola Bunny, I love you. Michael, I know, slut. No. <laughs> <There he is. laughs> Just no. Okay. See, I saw, but I've Michael keeps. This Will this be the end of his dick? <laughs> Huh? Michael Jordan. I'm sorry, Magic. I I had to do it. Why is Magic Johnson in this movie now? <laughs> yes, this dumb fuck just wasted your talent, which is an unforgivable sin. Bugs Bunny. Second only to suicide. Bugs will not be saying this. <laughs> See, I- interestingly <laughs> enough, Magic Johnson isn't even in the... <laughs> he's exactly. not even in Space Jam. <laughs> <laughs> that means that means that means Michael had the insight to bring him in, and the studio said, "Nah, yes, we, because because he had AIDS." <laughs> yeah, no, no. There's a scene where one of the the aliens, the, the uh, one of the the bad guys, shapeshifts into Magic Johnson, but their alien biological structure means that whoever they like morph into means they copy every single one of that person's. Biological traits, which means now the alien has AIDS, and Michael Jordan laughs at him and says, "You better die in twenty years, bitch," <laughs> and then dunks on him. Like that's the finale of the movie. The main bad guy gets AIDS. See, th- this would be. See, I really, really, really wish we could bankroll this movie because I want. Listen, Michael's still here. I think it's important <laughs> that, hey, we him, long, that we visit him. That we visit him while old. we can, and we hand him the script and tell him, "Listen, you've got the money. Let's make." We this don't happen. need a script. Let's just take away his pain medication and shit. He'll go. In the away. age of like adult animation with Rick and Morty and Harley Quinn, you could definitely do that shit. You could definitely uh, have him Bugs calling Bunny goes second only to suicide. Would second f- only to suicide. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> that that that, and then just seeing Bugs will not be saying this. Just reading the the annotations with the screenplay was just. Strange. My question is, what the fuck was Michael smoking, and where can I get it? Because if you, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when if you're, you when are you're right NBA champion, that, when you're NBA champion, you can afford a lot of. Was good he stuff. even? What's like? No, was he a two time? Well, was he a three time NBA champion by the time he was like done filming space? <laughs> Enough to give him the movie, that's for sure. Well, then it must have been, like, his second or third then, definitely. Well, he had already retired for baseball and shit. No, but he was coming back. Yeah. This is what's called, I think Space Jam happened the whole, like, I'm, I'm back, like, facts, like, the whole facts thing. Gotcha. And whatnot. Which, by the way, that is the most badass way to fucking announce to the world that you're coming back to the sport that you love and shit. Have you guys ever heard of that? No, so I, I am AIDS? seven years huh? old. You just say you have AIDS? No. <laughs> No, the way that Michael Jordan announced that he was coming back to the NBA after the whole oh, fucking base, baseball incident. Yeah. So he sends a, what's the word? He sends a fax that's just two letters, and it says, I'm back. Nothing else. It just says those, those two words. words. Oh, I have exactly. seen that. I've seen someone recreate that recently. Iconic. And then he goes on, then he comes back, makes his debut, and then fucking kills it. Imagine if no one got that fax. Like he sent it, and then they were just he accidentally like, goes to some like no, some paper he, company and yeah. like <laughs> six states over. Well, it's like when he sent in the facts, there were camera crews waiting. 
So oh, I think really? it was like scheduled and shit. People were, like were waiting for like this like you know long thoughtful after a long time away from this. You part. know how funny it would have been if you just send them like get fucked. Like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I made you wait here for like three hours. <laughs> that reminds me so much. I think it was like 2009 when the Dodgers brought on Manny Rodriguez, and I believe he was on the. On the Padres before I forget what team he sounds, was on. Sounds right, he, even though I don't know he, much. He was on one of our rival teams, and he had announced he was done with baseball. He's just gonna retire, and then the next season the Dodgers brought him on, and he just did he a goes, press I'm conference. Done losing baseball, <laughs> bitches. <laughs> <laughs> he, he literally he comes on the press conference. All he does is he goes, "I'm back," and leaves. <laughs> and I'm like, "What?" That, that's it? And, and he just does jazz hands, and then he leaves. And then he's the worst player we ever had. God, Manny Rodriguez sucks. <laughs> <laughs> that was the worst decision. Worst financial. He was so expensive, too. He was the most expensive signing for the Dodgers in, like, 40 years. I don't know why people, like, baseball people, keep deciding to sign all these big players and have them bust, and it pisses me off that MLB doesn't even have a salary cap either, too. Baseball's an age sport, right? Like, the younger you are, just naturally the better you're going to be, right? Yeah, once you get past 35, it starts getting really hard. It it starts getting hard to get picked up because, I mean, uh, Andre Ethier and the Dodgers, I mean, I don't remember his exact age, but I mean, I think he's nearing 40 soon. Um, or maybe past it at this point, I haven't kept yeah. track, but like when I was young and I was watching the Dodgers, he was in his prime. Yeah. But then by the time I grew up and was in high school, he was getting out of his prime. So he retired and then he came back for a couple seasons for the Dodgers kind of on a lower, lower paycheck. Um, and he, you know, he used to be our number one big hitter we would rely on andre and now it's kind of like eh, buddy <laughs> you can do it <laughs> clayton kershaw straight out of high school pitched a a, per, a no hitter that dude's got a fucking cannon wow. as an arm yeah but that cannon's dying <laughs> and well like that's the thing though too interestingly enough and whatnot though too um with sport like like talking about sports and like your decline i feel like the more the more contact you have like the longevity and whatnot yeah. starts like well, and down. the reason Kershaw stayed with the Dodgers for so long—he's long. still on there though too. He's, he's still on, on the he Dodgers, was... and the reason why is because he came straight out of high school, literally graduated, went to the Dodgers, and just got an insane signing deal because they saw his potential, and that potential was realized. And now every single team in the league wants him, but they're never going to get him because the Dodgers are forking over millions. Yeah, but like I. For his arm, I'd pay that much. Yeah, the only problem is there's a lot of guys coming out that are kind of, you know, overcoming his pitching style, and unfortunately he's people just not as he's like, not as reliable. Like fil- people mm-hmm. have like half film on him. It's the same thing that happened with Colin Kaepernick when he yeah. answered. No one had any answers for him, like, running right the pocket and shit until, like, two years, and then everyone fucking figured it out. Yeah, and so it's, it's just – he's just getting older, and it's – my most frustrating thing to watch the Dodgers, especially in like playoffs and World Series, is we just go, okay, I get, oh, we're losing, okay, Kershaw. <laughs> speaking, speaking of, did you guys watch the uh, Owl, Owl, the Overwatch League? Um, I didn't watch them one the other day. I'm gonna watch the one on Friday. There's not one on Friday. What uh, what yeah, what, what did it look like? Oh, Saturday. Um, sorry. Um, yeah, Saturday. Uh, so what? Shock. Uh, no, what's crap? Washington Justice got out this past weekend after a uh, prayer. What's called? Um, I think they lost Thank the Atlanta Reign like two to one or Thank three to God. one. God, not bad. What map? Um, no, because I was watching them yesterday. They fucking what's all Atlanta, dude? Atlanta Reign's DPS, like all of their players, whether it's tank or like support, like these, all of these guys hit their shots, like, and it's astounding how good they are. Um, I think they did Nepal. What's it called? Yesterday they they lost to Nepal and. The first time they like they got up to ninety nine, but then Atlanta Rain came back. Um, they are they were like they captured point first at like eighty three, up to eighty three. Uh, Washington came back and they were doing a pretty good bat, but then until like everyone centered around like that center pillar on Nepal for capture point, and then it was a ma- it was May's game from there. <laughs> Fair, jeez. Um, and but what's it called? Lots of people were having trouble on the Greece map, the one for Helios. 
Yeah. What a disheartening but no, time. But no one was getting a lot of like super crazy hooks though, or boops for that matter though too. You're not going to see a lot of that in Overwatch League because the proper way to play that map is to, once you get the point, you move up to that choke um, right under there, right close to their spawn, and you just hover around those corners with enough, enough natural cover for when they make their advance, you can pull back a little bit. People who play for hooks or play for boops are people who just like sit on point waiting for something to happen. Yeah. You're giving yourself, you're giving in your team just the ultimate opportunity to lose point because there's so many counters to those boops. Yeah. Because it's so predictable to see a Lucio coming unless he's a Reddit Lucio and he's just up top. There was a, a Lucio in our returners tournament who repeatedly tried to boop us off the edge mm -hmm. and failed miserably every time. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't play. I don't play. I don't play Lucio and whatnot. But here's the interesting. The See, thing. I do. It's not that hard. You right click, aim a little bit up, and boom. Wow. <laughs> he's got. He's got a point. But um, the new meta now is weird though too with supports now. Mm -hmm. Watching these past games. Um, it's ba it's like super BAP and Lucio based now, and even Lucio, uh, what's it called? Even BAP and Zen. Well, cause see, BAP can output enough healing to compensate for what the other healer can't do. But like that, like that's the thing though too, where like sometimes I'm like looking at this is like his recharge, like that Immort is so fucking crucial. Immort is the most broken ability in the game right now. Fucking I love BAP because seconds. of his <laughs> aggression that you can cause with his abilities. More so than any other support, really. Yeah. Well, sure. and window is huge with double shield because shield break instant and it oh. charges so fast. By the way, at San Francisco Shock, they made it through. They beat um, Hung Zhao, but not Hung Zhao Spark. The Hunters? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. They, they faced them today. They got oh. they had the, what's it, they had to play yesterday and they had to play today, too. Wow. Yeah, because they were double the, header. They were in the losers brackets. And guess who they face? They face at Shanghai, who they faced last year and shit film before the. Before I hope the they lose. Fuck you. Fuck See, you. my team my wasn't team. even in this year, so it's like. Who's well, your team? Uh, sh uh, Seoul. Oh, Seoul. Huh? Dino it was a, um, no, I think they were. No, we had to beat up Philadelphia yesterday because we, we faced Philadelphia Fu Fusion. <laughs> Dude, Ons yesterday was going fucking absolute bonkers against their whole entire support group and shit really on like with his ash and shit oh my god he was getting boosted it was watching like it was kind of like watching valorant for a second that's how <laughs> like it was and it wasn't just like shot it was, these were all like ads shots too with ash so the proper like, way to play Ash. and oh my gosh even um chiyoibin you guys know him the tank for uh the shock Ch yeah yeah he, um, there was this part where they were playing Nepal and the Tracer was just annoying the shit out of him. And the Tracer went to go, um, put her bomb on him. This dude whips around as Sigma, gets the, like, absorbs the bomb with it too. And then he hears her recall and he fucking boulders up, smashes her <laughs> as she recalls, and then he gets the pick. That's nice. amazing. And it's such a quick, and it's, and it's like that happens in an instant. And I'm like, oh my God. I was, I was popping off a of Sigma the other night. I was playing with, oh them. yeah playing with a GM Smurf who was in silver, but he was he had come from his a throwing group, and he's like, you know what? I just want to like help some people out. We'll, we'll play some games, and he was surprisingly so making nice. more mistakes than a lot of like the actual plat people. When you practice to play poorly, I mean. yeah, and so yeah. he was like kind of like making comp suggestions, and I was listening. I was like, yeah, tell me, tell me what you want me to do, and I was like, you know, what? I'm gonna play Sigma. I just started shredding and like landing every single rock. Got like can, every single flux was like a 3K plus. And he was just, he looked at me, he's like, hey, maybe you should just like play Sigma and then maybe you'll just like climb. <laughs> and I was like, sure enough, I just started playing Sig. Because the thing with Sig right now, Hog is coming back, mm -hmm. Diva's coming back, which <laughs> Zarya is out. Sorry, is out of the meta right now. I don't do what's called. Here's the thing: I don't think she'll ever be out because of Grab Dragon and like the fact that her ult can what's called like 
we've what's called, every, we've all we've all seen it and shit mm-hmm. during like Overwatch League um like videos and shit P- like with with that grab and shit can instantly win a battle instantly if 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 played correctly. I've had a like couple a, of matches where we've been doing a lot of Zar Monkey lately. Mm-hmm. Zar Monkey, it's Zar, I, Zar with one dive Zar Monkey. I don't. I, I'm gonna be quite honest. I'm not a big fan. It's and of see, I, I am. Effective it's my. It's one. It's, it's better than Zar Diva, because Diva. Yeah, but Diva, it requires Diva, a really good monkey. Diva automatically negates a lot of damage with her mech and with the defense matrix. So if you're running Zardiva, you have to be like, okay, Diva, you got to go take damage and then I bubble you. Monkey's going to take damage instantly because when you dive someone as Diva, your instinct is to f- is to flash your matrix in case of sleep, flashbang, whatever. Yeah. Um, but I think right now the best like counter picks, so say like, your your enemy team is running Ryan Hog or Hog Zarya, instantly go Diva, like Diva's number one. I know they say don't run Diva and Zarya, but I would run Diva and Zarya. Wait, really? Yeah, because, I'd rather do that. What's it like? Because, That's my first instant reaction and shit. Because here's the thing: running Diva into a Hog Zarya means that you can protect every, any single teammate that gets hooked. You just fly Matrix, boom, because Hook is God, I love to absolutely love crazy right now. But Zarya, once her bubbles are down. And you just start aiming at her head. She can't do anything. All she can do if she has low charge, you're, she's dead. Yeah. But so the whole point, need... the whole point of of countering Azaria is to make sure you're not feeding her, make sure she's not getting value out of her bubbles, and to just dive the shit out of her. I'm gonna be honest. I have been fucking up with that. Like I'll use the coalescence, and like Zarya will be down, and my stupid ass is just like she'll have bubble. I'm still aiming mm-hmm. for her. Well, and, and then she gets fucking like what seventy. Dude, there was one time like we were about to fucking capture point. My stupid ass fucks up, and I start pointing at her because she's just in the middle <laughs> of the fucking fight. And then you all get decimated. My stupid ass, why they die? <laughs> yeah, that's, I'm sorry. That's one, that's one thing we're gonna talk about is uh, don't feed Zarya because if there's one character that doesn't give any like benefit to shoot at, <laughs> well, yeah, or but also just, like especially for like fucking warrior or shit, you know, like. like there, there are tells in the game for certain yeah. things. You know, like you can tell when Orion is shattered, the way he starts playing, the way he starts shifting around, flashing that his shield. That makes me nervous as fuck, too. It, it's just a mind game. A hug. You can tell when he's gonna like try and aim for a hook because he, same thing. He starts moving around. Zarya, however, there's no, absolutely no way to tell in the middle of a team fight what her charge is at. Yeah, <laughs> but like except that's for looking at her beam. back. But like, what's like and I, the beam. That's yeah. all. Wait, that's like, because the beam gets bigger, it gets louder, and then her back starts glowing like profusely. So that's the only way to tell. But in the middle Hepatitis of a team fight, a. <laughs> in the middle of a team fight, you're not looking at that shit. You're not like, oh, I'm gonna check Zarya's back, see what her charge is at. All you know is she's high charge. She's high charge. Um. So yeah, I don't know. I just feel like running dive into any kind of Zarya comp is just massive. True, but here's where I feel like I feel like for my play style, I like it when the the op, like the opposing team is in one place for all of us to do. Mm-hmm. And a big thing that like for that you know I like you and I talked about Carlos about like how I play and stuff is just alt management and stuff. Mm-hmm. And like for me, the best way I can support is by doing coalescence and having my team mm-hmm. like you know. Either have them like gather some people up in like a like corner and stuff like that. King's Row, favorite map to do that because yeah. of like how many like walls I can bounce it off my my uh, well, my alien orbs and stuff if like you're that. Playing with your team properly, it's just gonna happen naturally, you know. Yes, but like, and this is where like um like what's it, like what like alts like grab dragon super good. I think that coalescence can be good as well. It just has to like there's certain mm-hmm. things for us to do that like. What's the word like? An, uh, like an on a comp in a Moira? I fucking love that shit mm-hmm. for the opportunities that it can give me to output what I need to. Yeah. But like, still back up and like, backline. Like, what's like me playing backline support? I'm fucking good at. Yeah. I can like just I can be back there and shit. And if they're not if they're not like like wise enough and shit to come and just dive me and focus on me, then what's called then yeah. then that, that means we get more picks as a team and shit. You yeah, know? and I think there there comes a certain. When it comes to aggression and pushes, because we have a very aggressive main tank, that means <laughs> that backline has to be aggressive to a certain extent too. And what we're gonna talk about, like in our in our vods during practice, is like tanks make way for your fight, right? Tanks make the space, but if someone is supposed to move to an area first, it's your supports. 
your supports move first and your tanks just make sure you can get there safely so on that second oasis map when when we said that you know our hog was playing for hooks and stuff yeah. like that there was no safe way for our supports to get up there because i believe you went up to the window we see we see victory go up to the window and try and land some grenades because victory thought uh hog was with him and then hog shifts over to the right hooks the rhine and then Zarya goes back over with Hog and then leaves all our squishies open to Zen. And then bam, Bonesaw, oh, Isaac, yeah, part, and yeah. you die yeah. instantly. Three picks, we lost the fight. And then, obviously, you were getting some charge. And then Diva started um, aggravating our Hog. And then th that was an oopsie. On and you know what's weird, though, too? Looking at all of these, um, these Overwatch League mm -hmm. matches. Oh my god, bro! Their team fights last so much longer than ours. Cause we, like during our scrims and shit, we've well, been it's in like some it's fucking... like amateur versus pro tennis. The volley gets longer and longer the yeah. better you get. Like these, like what's called, like, I've noticed that in Overwatch League matches, you only, there's only two times where like what's called like people will actually start like getting on the point with like any and all picks. Mm -hmm. They they'll move in for that or um, what's the word? They'll like they'll like the team fight is going on like too long. And now everyone's just playing alt, like you know, because a lot of the times, Tracer I've noticed a lot more with like the meta. She's more of like the engage, like what's like she's like the engager and shit. Yeah, she's engagement and flank, and and yeah. because she can be really good at just picking off someone in the back line. Symmetra recalling. just needs to fucking go. I can't stand those fucking turns. Yeah, Symmetra needs to. Symmet what they need to do is they we need, need to start playing. They that need to that make way. them still need... one hit technically. But are they one hit? They're they're ten when HP. You can't reach them. It's like they're ten it's... HP, but you can't reach them because and and here's Zarya should be able to clean them up, right? But I can't because I bubble, and the second I bubble, the turrets destroy the bubble, and I'm just like an idiot looking up trying to clear them. That's and like then the... my head's exposed to widow or something, and I'm like, it's because it, I, I'm being slowed that I can't like aim properly. So toning down the slow effect to be. Like like right now it's it's longer than May. That's how long the slow is. It's really. I feel stupid. like if I if I like if I'm Moira and shit, my orb should be able to like. They used to be able to. Yeah, I, I know. I was they, overpowered as hell. Emphasis on the oh, emphasis on the whole. You know, it's a hard to. counter. It should be. It makes sense when you think about it. Yeah. Speaking of hard counters, God, I love when I see a Genji on the other team. Like, come on, bitch. <laughs> Let me suck you. And then I just love it when they're like they're pressing the reflect button. And like, yeah. Like, what are you going to reflect? <laughs> when bitch? you're playing Zarya and you see Genji deflect. Hmm. <laughs> There's only two things you can deflect: these nuts and the Zarya and the Zarya bubble. And I'm not giving you either. <laughs> Bruh. All right, well, since all of that going... Dude, what if an Overwatch cartoon was made? I'd, I'd watch that. Overwatch would get an anime, or I would... I, actually, now that Blizzard is suffering from their second or third lawsuit, I think I would really number love three. to see them f three, do my old. idea and make a fucking show with their animation quality because them and Riot are both companies mm -hmm. that don't use their animation budget enough. Actually, do you know that there's like 32 different positions open at Activision Blizzard right now? I know. Dude, I'm so... Oh. Let's go snag some up. I'm sure they could use the help. I'd be... I, I would I would freak out if I could work for a video game company. Uh, Even if it's Activision? Activision it, was actually... Fun, fun fact, actually. Blizzard, when I was a kid, when I wanted to go into game design, Blizzard was the company I wanted to work with. Really? I, what's, I have the same thought, too. Do you want to know what mine is? Because it's, huh. it's funny enough, too, because this company doesn't ex exist anymore. Midway Games. Midway. Midway, Midway yeah. yeah. I remember their... They had Mortal the, Kombat yeah. Shaolin Monks was the best title that... Well, I don't want to say no, the best title. They were. They made racing games, too, didn't they? They made the Crash Bandicoot racing games. Crash yeah. Team Racing. Yep. This shit was fire. They also made, I think, Crash... Uh, Nitro Kart? Yes, yeah. Also an amazing. Game. I wanted, I wanted to play. I was like, I wanted to like work for these guys and stuff like that. Um, but I think the only reason, if I were to go to Blizzard now, even with all that shit going on, I feel like I would go for the opportunity to make it better. Fair. <laughs> Rather than people say, why would you like? Why would you go work for a company and shit like that? Because like, I believe that though, like. The majority of like those were the those people who are being convicted right now. May they rot in hell, rot in prison and shit for all the fucking shit that they've done. But as far as like all the, did you guys hear about the, like the, all the all the other Activision Blizzard employees like getting th death threats and whatnot? I did not. Yeah, a lot of um, yeah, a lot of uh, people 
um, who worked for the company that had nothing to do with it are getting like death threats and threats of like you know like you work for this company that makes you automatically bad by association wow. and stuff like that. That's a shame. Which is I'm all like, come on, and sh- like, and I super and I like even with that situation and shit like. I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of things to be bent. Like, what's the word? <sighs> Hold Since on. I, I was just reminded of something that's been in the recent news that I need to talk about. <sighs> so, E-man. as the resident man who likes to buy expensive clothing. Oh, oh no. yes. No. I saw that. That pissed and me off. And as someone who does own two Balenciaga clothing items. Right, what, seeing, is one of them shoes? Uh, no, I own a sweater and a shirt. Um... One of the things that has pissed me off this week is the Fortnite X Balenciaga collab. Now, four hundred ninety-five dollars. Yes, the issue does not lie in the design, nor does it lie in the collaboration. The issue lies in the price. Now, Fortnite has already made millions of dollars as a game. That's no surprise. I would be. Sh- I wouldn't be shocked if it made a billion. Balenciaga is a company that weren't is known nowadays for selling really high quality products at really high prices. Five hundred bucks for a jean jacket that says Fortnite on the back in the Fortnite font should not be that worth five hundred dollars. If anything, the Fortnite name and logo should depreciate the clothing item. One because it dates it, which is something that most items you know don't have to deal with, and two. It put it makes it an it takes it from an item of clothing that you would wear out in public as a status symbol yeah. and make it into an item of clothing that you would keep in your closet just to say that you own. Now it's specifically for content creators and streamers, which is why I was considering buying one. No, god <laughs> damn it, no. If you did You couldn't talk anymore. <laughs> yeah. I just it's just a white hoodie that says Fortnite in black in black font. I'm right? not joking, Vic, we could that like... we could literally make for twenty bucks. Like it's it's so hilarious. I have the prices here. And I have the picture too. So this is like just a plain white shirt it's with Fortnite. Oh, is it a long sleeve? They have a long sleeve. Actually, that's kind of fire. This is just a church shirt. Oh, the, that's a church. He shirt. says it's, it's fire. It's a like, button up. Never mind. I'm wrong. I'm he wrong. says it's fire. Like it's like a like a special shirt. Nine hundred and ninety five dollars <laughs> for a church long sleeve. I could make shirt. that. If exactly. it's a if it's a Anyone button up, can. yes, I understand. If it's one of those long, if it's like a crew neck, red long Fortnite sleeve, Balenciaga, three hundred and ninety five dollars. I could make for, that. Now, if they changed hey, it to a hat that said no, "Make like, America Fortnite again," for everyone that's I think like, that would be hilarious. That would be, for every, and a great market. For everyone that's listening, this this hat it's red. What, what do you do in the game? It just says Fortnite. You build on walls. It. Yeah. <laughs> it just says Fortnite on it with Balenciaga underneath, and what seems to be a track list. Uh, I believe it's just a bunch of like design information. But like, what? Like, or a nutrition label. A four hundred ninety five dollars for a black Fortnite T shirt. That's hey, that's the one. That's you can the make one. that shit look like the battle pass. <laughs> you can make that's this shit I'm on saying. ink on ink Mon- master or some shit like that. Quite literally, that thing or will be it will exist in multitudes of knockoffs. Six hundred and thirty dollars Balenciaga Nevermind cat sunglasses. Oh, it's the glasses from the character. Seven hundred and twenty five for a white Fortnite hoodie. Jeez, it's okay. just seven hundred twenty five dollars for seventy five dollars more. I'm about to lose my shit. Twelve hundred dollars for a Fortnite Balenciaga jean jacket. I am not keen, you folks. This is what the day we live in. And I have shit. to say that's the only one that looks unique in that any way because it like. has Fortnite. This looks unique. Well. Where's 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 the logo? There's like a it's logo on the somewhere. back. It's in the stitch. It's not even showing. There's like it, it's like a big logo on the back that I saw. But like, and here's the thing though too. Like people are like the thing that I hate about like the entertainment industry, like the fucking um, fashion industry, especially the whole Met Gala. That's. <sighs> <laughs> yeah. See, I love stuff like the Met Gala for fashion. I think, uh, and uh, as a matter of fact, if I if I haven't told you guys before. My uh, my senior prom, may it rest in peace, um, was originally Met Gala themed. So uh, I found it, I, I remember just how vividly and how much effort went into, it turns off because it ran out of space, um, how much work went into trying to design my suit for that year. And had I gone through with the full payment, I would have spent 1200 bucks on what, what might have been the most beautiful suit in my entire life. 
See, that's worth it to me. That's a suit. I love the idea of showing up to some place dressed in the best outfit you could possibly wear, yeah. especially if it's a once in a year, like, or once in a lifetime event. True, the Met Gala, however, they're not in the best outfit. Met Gala, whatsoever. hit me up. I'd love to visit. I'd love to work with whatever designer you have. I'll make it work. I can Met rock Gala, stuff that's me. not traditionally ma- masculine. The Met it Gala is me. funny because I love laughing at rich people. So I, seeing them walking around making themselves look like buffoons is the funniest thing to me. Think The fact that they think they're cool. <laughs> Only people who look good were like Zendaya. That the one people year. who kind of keep their shit low key. I loved Lil Nas X's see? outfit this year. What was his? I was sorry to if like you Lil, if you Lil Nas X like a lot more. Lil Nas X is one of my favorites. Yeah, the pregnancy thing is too weird for me. Though. Oh, I yeah, thought it that. made sense. He was carrying the huh? album for he, he made the album nine months ago. He's been holding onto it for nine months. No, I know, it but just the, nine the months pictures ago, make me it. wildly uncomfortable. Oh yeah. well, that's his whole point. The whole point is to draw the outrage through his marketing. If yeah. you saw his videos that came out right before the album came out, the uh, Lil Nas X gives birth and the Montero show. Both which really showcase that he is hilarious. Like he's he's, he's funny. A, he's a com- he's a good comedian. He's a troll. His, and, his and it's Twitter because he's all, he's like our age. Like he has our humor. Did down you see pad. that one tweet when it was like a bunch of like these big like hulking guys and it says like Can, can you, you take him? Can you take him? He's like, Yeah. Oh wait, yeah, you mean all fight. at the same time. <laughs> oh, oh you mean a fight. <laughs> um, but uh but no, like let's like talk about the Edinburgh Gala. Eight, like Easily the biggest story there was AOC and her hypocrite, you know, hypocritical fucking dress and shit. Okay, so like right, we're gonna touch on this very lightly. Here's the thing: uh, the the thing about uh, AOC is that she, we were just saying, Lil Nas X is you know like one of us. He's like in our generation. She's not in our generation. She's a generation above. Which, but she's trying to be like she's in ours. Though. She's trying to be, but she's succeeding. Ah, no. a, lot, every, a lot of no. I don't think so. No. Think think of the average person in our generation right the the 13 or however many thousand followers she has on instagram right you moved it why did you i thought it just that? moved you looked at me like you like i did something this shit <laughs> i thought it moved on its own no you moved <laughs> This man Scooby Doo his ass in the in the, in the thing. Homeboy scared him. Where's the straw come from? <laughs> I didn't move that. Homie looked at me and said, "Oh, Raggy." Um. Anyways, now look at her, and it's sort of like the same way that they looked at Jennifer Lawrence when the Hunger Games are coming out. And like she's like me, she likes pizza. And it's then, that same kind of that kind of trope and that kind of uh, like what do you call it? that like repetition. And I noticed that because. When I was growing up and the Hunger Games were popular and Jennifer Lawrence was popular and she did said in one interview that pizza was her favorite food, every single 14-year-old girl said she's my best friend. And we were like, why? 14-year-olds in general don't know how to make good decisions. No, I understand. But now those 14-year-olds are saying AOC is their best friend because she posted a funny meme about how she doesn't sleep. See, I don't think it's right to have to be that parasocially connected to a politician. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I think that no matter what, they don't always have your interest in mind. Yeah, uh, AOC, no, it's, it's AOC's totally, yeah. the the hip the, politician. The thing I will say about her showing up to the Met Gala is what is so this is the, so the Met Gala's invite, right? So it's so you get the invitation. You don't request to go. So my question is, do you think that by chance she got invited and just needed something to justify her being there? So that she couldn't get called out for her hypocrisy in the way of just showing up. Mm. That's actually pretty good. Because I feel like if she just showed up to the rich event, being the person who's all about taxing yeah. the rich, whether or not you're on her side or not, it would make more sense for her to go and attempt to make a poorly done statement than it would to show up in a beautiful dress designed by a really expensive fashion designer and just kind of, you know, assimilate into the population. Yeah, true, but at the same time, like, if your whole platform is, like, taxing the rich and, like, rich people are doing this when we need to involve, like, all and, like, you know, be inclusive of everyone. Well, isn't she about, like, corporation taxes more so than, like, celebrities? Because, like, celebrities like celebrities are the ones who will, will pay their taxes. Corporations and, like, you know, CEOs and all that and corporate executives, those are the ones who will find a way to not pay taxes, right? But the thing is, no matter what, they're just going to find a way to not pay taxes. Yeah, but, like, what's, like, her going to the Met Gala and whatnot, like, know, like what's, like, knowing full well who runs this, what kind of people go to this, who, like, you know, people who probably help fund the event and stuff like that, like, that, those are the people that you're going against. So why do you show up in a real, what's called, like, 
It just doesn't make sense. I think, yeah, I get that. I understand, and I totally understand from a wide uh, perspective why it's so controversial. the The big thing is just to, that I wanted that I li- like like to highlight is just that you know if she got, she, if she got invited, she, she it, it's you know, better to different. show up and be like, haha, you invited someone who's against what you stand for. You know, you're not paying your taxes, you mega corporations, blah blah blah. And then she goes and sits down, has dinner with all the like the celebrities. The celebrities aren't the issue. Most of them are probably paying their taxes, except for like Kanye. And like the few that care that much. Yeah, true. So it's like, it might just be performance for performance sake in order to cover her ass. Debatable. But anyways, shoebox. <laughs> anyways, debatable. So we, yeah. Footlocker shoebox. <laughs> <laughs> anyways, um, oh, what's it called? Yeah, Saturday morning. So today's <laughs> topic. Today's episode is about Saturday morning cartoons we for all, the next thirty minutes. Thirty minutes. Because <laughs> we all know, we all love those Saturday morning cartoons. We all. Grew up watching them, uh, depending on what the age so, gap is and shit. So, for starters, were you guys Nickelodeon, Disney, or Cartoon Network kids? All of the above. Did you have, like, one that stood out more than the rest? It depends. No. Do you guys remember the order you shuffled through? No. It was always whichever uh, channel was, like, on, like, Channel 30 and shit. Because every Saturday morning, they had the best cartoon. Got you. Shit. See, I would do Boomerang in the mornings on Cartoon Network. I can't do Boomerang. For old cartoons. I can't do Boomerang. And then I would switch to Nickelodeon morning and mid-afternoon because that's spongebob fairly odd parents jimmy neutron and then the late night slot and the afternoon slot was yeah, disney because they had all the disney xd and uh, this is before Nick disney Jones. dxd bro what's called disney like for like when preview you, uh, best in teenage or boys? back when i was younger jet x was the night jet x was the um, best network. Where you, what were you gonna say what you said disney, disney. i heard disney and prepubescent no, no they're like the best like the best like show for a prepubescent boy at the time was jet x because jet oh, x okay, had everything some fire shit dude they had super everything. robot monkey team hyperforce yeah Go. high five shit was fire absolutely amazing they Yin had yang every... yo as well comedic <gasps> hilarity Yin yang yo from dude. start to finish that was the original it's... rick and morty it was written so well every episode <laughs> no, legit, had like, it's just like let's just imagine like if like two asian little asian kids who knew kung fu was getting talked by an old black guy oh it's so good it's it's yang, so, yang, it, yang, now that yo. i think about it actually hold on it's a black guy voicing a panda that's named master yo i never really <laughs> caught that oh that's <laughs> <laughs> And like he, oh, and when he was younger, when he was yin, younger, he to, when he was younger, he totally had an afro too. Like that was a character trait. <laughs> nice. Dude, no, but like, there's one joke that stands out to me from that show, and it's the uh, tortoises from the '80s. Tortoises from the '80s. <laughs> I think I know what. And it's like the there's weirdest so reference, but it, it, like anybody who's seen it knows what it is. There's so many innuendos in that show. That's why I, I loved it. And I bet you, if we go look at it now, we'll notice so much more yeah. because it's been a while since I watched that show. But no, Jet X had even all the all the be- best power. Right, uh, what's all, all the best seasons of Power Rangers? Did you guys watch Digimon? <gasps> Dude, Digimon's. I don't I'll, think I watched Digimon. Digimon is better. Is you, way better. Are you than are you familiar with Digimon? I know what way. Digimon is, you, but I, I the didn't. absolute absurdity you know that is the evolution you know line of Digimon. <laughs> Do you know what Digimon is? Do you know what Digimon is? I know what Digimon is. <laughs> See, as someone who only watched seasons <laughs> one, two, four, six, and then like the Cantonese release. Of uh, like of like there's a lot <laughs> there's what? like eight or nine Digimon series and some of them aren't canon some of them are some of them take place Digimon, only in their country of release Digimon it's so is going weird. through Digimon goes through what like Dragon Ball Z goes through every now and then so the if you pull up like the Agumon specifically if you pull up like Agumon's ele- evolutionary line he goes from being like the little squishy like lizard uh, and shit like tank to, <laughs> oh, a, to a lizard to a tank he becomes a literal tank imagine if you, Reinhardt like, if he could fly t- take nice. a dinosaur wrap it in a tank that is what he evolves into it right? has been scientifically proven that Agumon's final digivolution is able to be Charizard at its max power that was a death battle that happened Right? Mm-hmm. It it's makes like, sense, dude. Digimon it gets unbelievable. I think what's the what's the from the Battle of Memory one? Ty just runs up on Ash and just runs his shit. <laughs> no, just imagine this battle because you know how Pokemon trainers don't get involved, right? So in this death battle, it's Charizard versus Ch- um what's a uh, Agumon? But Agu- I think he's uh, in uh, War Greymon. Greymon. Yeah, Greymon. War Greymon stage again. Just think of Reinhardt if he could have the mm-hmm. power of the sun and could fly. 
So these two are going at it, and the Pokemon trainer's like, get him, Charizard. Ty just runs. Ty runs and gangs his ass. <laughs> like, goes, Ty runs him for his phone. He goes, let's shit. go. We're about this shit. <laughs> <laughs> he's all like, he's all like, what are you doing? And then Ty's like, call off your dragon. And then the Pokemon trainer's like, we're not supposed to fight. <laughs> just with the most confused look. It's and so good. And then, like, the battle ends with, like, both Charizard and Ash, like, literally disintegrating with the power of the sun and shit. Dude, Digimon got hectic. I remember re- when I dark. sat down at the age of like 13 and watched the first season all the way through when it was being released on Nickelodeon because they were they were doing the marketing for Fusions, which yeah. sucked. Um, <sighs> they they fucked that up. Well, so it was I remember show, it though, gets so. to the end of the se- of the first se- first series, and they go from going on their adventure, getting their crests, learning what they're about, learning their abilities, to fighting literally like what is essentially a like a, a, a like biblical a, angel that is about to destroy the entire universe and yep. almost does it. Like the, they only get to fight him when he's like halfway to doing mm-hmm. so. Yeah, it's genuinely something that I cannot believe I watched. It's a, as a super kid. dark show. Like the themes of it, like it's like it's Digimon is one of those shows where like different seasons tackle different issues. They also do different mechanics every season. Yeah. There's, like, season four specifically, which is the one that released when we were, like, two, three, four, respectively. Um, <laughs> the, uh, they, you, they was essentially Power Rangers in Digimon form because they oh, would yeah, just Digimon morph into the, into the Digimon. Dude, that song had no fucking uh, issue. Like past <laughs> as we head for the future. I have heard that. Bro, that shit, it's dude, so I have fire. heard that. Dude, if that does not make me want a fucking Power Ranger morph and Shinso Digimon, I'm fucking down Oh, for it's it. so That good. one is probably my favorite season by yeah. far, though, too. You want to know a show that's built different? Spectacular Spider-Man. Spectacular Spider-Man was really well done. That was that was my thing. That's the, like, also the critically the favorite I love TV Spider-Man cartoon, the animated right? series. You and know Jake Bell from Drake and Josh uh-huh. who was the voice for of that? Ultimate yeah. Spider-Man? For, or, no, no, for Ultimate for Spider-Man. Ultimate Drake was Bell was Spectacular. Ultimate. Spectacular was Drake Bell. Ultimate was... Why um, isn't Drake Ultimate, Bell Spider-Man? Ultimate Let's Drake give Drake Bell, Bell the Spider-Man. Wasn't scene. Ultimate Josh, It was on Disney. Josh Keaton, right? Well, no, because maybe they might have switched halfway through, but I know Drake some, Bell was definitely the voice at the beginning of Ultimate Spider-Man. <gasps> yeah, you're right. Um, Spectacular Spider-Man might have been someone Oh, different. Spectacular was Josh Keaton. Yeah. Uh, Ultimate then, was though, Drake Bell. Yeah, Ultimate, because that was the one on Disney XD yeah. and shit. That was the yeah. one that involved like the Nova and all that. Yeah. All that. It's that pretty, one was good, too. That it's one was pretty good. good. Um. Yeah, Drake Bell. Um, Their depiction of the Green Goblin was um, was like pretty good. Mm-hmm. That's one where yes. they were like finally incorporporting Spider Verse. Like, the Avengers stuff and happened stuff. in that uh, in Ultimate as well, yeah. right? And then there was uh, the new animated series with um, Neil Patrick Harris. Is that the oh, new one that's, that's out right no, now? No, no, no. no, no. no. It, it was uh, it was the one that came between spectacular between animated series and spectacular. It was Sony's like attempt of like doing like an adult like theme. Spider-Man TV show and shit, oh, and they just kind of flopped after one you. season and shit. What the '80s Spider-Man? The no, one? No, no, no. This is like mid 2000s Was Spectacular the one where? No, that's not. Spectacular is not the. Uh, the Spectacular is the one that the released Spider-Man in like the 2010s. when I was a young kid. It's this one, the new where, animated series. Got you. It like it, it looks really weird. It's, oh no! Yeah, oh. It, it's like it's like semi 3D animated. Which it is looks like a PS2 game. Yes, yeah, it, does. it it's interesting. Although new animated series I, uh, MJ a, a <laughs> made awaken something within me. Oh yeah. But. By, by by chance, uh, was it so after Spectacular? Maybe when I was younger, I vividly remember the cartoon Spider Man. When like the specific arc that I remember is when he's fighting Craven and he gets mm-hmm. the serum that gives him the actual spider arms. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The old is one that, from the 90s. That's the nineties Spider Man. Yeah. That's the Spider Man. That was the one one that had Spider Man and his amazing friends with it, right? Which they remade just recently, Mm -hmm. and I don't know how I feel about that. And that's the one where it has the greatest piece of over voice acting when he has the black suit. (laughs) With us, I'll get you, Shocker! (laughs) Shocker! Oh, yeah. (laughs) It's so good. God damn it. Homeboy was out of the They sold that one. (laughs) Homeboy had NBA Youngboy vibes, bro. Mm -hmm. No, so those that, those shows had some of the best like arcs that I've ever seen a cartoon tackle in yeah. terms of like like s- physical stakes when I when I would watch it. It's like like when specifically the the nineties Spider Man that I that I partake partook in. Um, I remember watching it and seeing that episode and going, "This is fucking gruesome." I didn't know this was a thing he could do at the time. <laughs> yeah, 
I remember being very like scared, but um, Spider Man just running everyone's shit. No, yeah, those shows were great. Did you guys like? So did you guys like actually watch through Spectacular Spider Man? Because I didn't. I did. I was too young. Yeah, I think. I, think uh, I did. I think I. I there were so I don't... many characters at one point where like it just became mm-hmm. over convoluted and stuff. Yeah, I think I kind of spaced and kind of forgot most of the stuff, but I remember most of the key points. Okay, I, I, I do remember the Halloween episode, the yeah. iconic Halloween episode when he shows up. And I believe it's him and Gwen, and then uh, does he or, just show up? No, it's Spider-Man? not. It's not Gwen. It's it's he's meeting uh, Betty Brant, I think, at the Halloween carnival, and she's like, "Where are you?" And he shows up right behind her. He's like, "Oh, I'm here." She's like, "Oh, sick Spidey costume." He's like, "Thanks." And then oh, MJ no. and her friend walk up, and MJ's like, "Damn, Peter, you wear that costume well." And her friend goes, "Yeah, you can whip me up anytime." <laughs> God, these damn windows, bro. <laughs> they knew what they were doing. Exactly. He was. Like, and never forget what was the name of that show, that Avengers show, um, Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Earth's Mightiest Heroes. Oh my God, dude, that shit got that, dark. That shit got dark, and that shit was horny as hell. God, whoever was animating Black Widow and Wasp were on something. Like th- someone recounted they that bad. No, someone went through and combed. I guess you could call him a coomer for doing this. But they combed through every single episode and found every instance of when they, like, focused on Black Widow's butt or Wasp's boobs. And it was actually egregious. <laughs> like, it kind of made me sick. I was like, this is for a kid's show? This is too much. It's all that, all that, what would, what would you call that? Straight propaganda? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're showing something to make our They're kids They're brainwashing straight. the kids. <laughs> Put their chemicals ass. in the t- in the cartoons turning the kids gay. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, that. Was... But no, genuinely, Alex quite, Jones and shit. Yeah, but yeah. quite genuinely though, it it was mm-hmm. it is interesting because you'll go back and you'll look at your the, like the shows you watched as a kid and the innuendos in them are always way funnier to go back and watch. But like comfort shows are like all I watch mm-hmm. for my childhood, yeah. <laughs> like religiously. I've watched the same like six shows nine times at this point. I think. <laughs> And so uh, going back through something like, um, let's see, what was I going through recently? I just recently watched through Avatar again, but that doesn't have much fan service in it, luckily. Um, <laughs> Thank God it didn't. Yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, nowadays I feel like the fan base sexualizes the characters more than the uh, show ever. Oh, yeah, no, 100%. Yeah, that's the fucking problem with fan bases and shit. <laughs> Especially anime. I That's vividly annoying. remember, like, Korra being a show that was so critically disliked that nobody would even bother to try to, like, give, like, care about the characters' interactions. And then the Tumblr text posts started coming through on the revival. But I can and it felt Tumblr. so interesting to hear people finally critically analyze Korra as a character Wait. because they never did it for her before. And nobody like, cared enough. Yeah, you're tr- Yeah, you're right. But like, she did, like the thing is, like the writers made us not care about her because they're like, they were just. I was on the train where like I didn't like her. Really? Yes, because I did. I felt like they didn't do a good enough job trying like fleshing that like. I think as its own piece of media, she's very well fleshed out as a character. What's called? There were just some times where like. I would want like for a like, thirty minute like time frame and shit for like there was just. Let's call it some of the things that they're tackling with, like with her issues and stuff, as like become like the new avatar and shit. It just, it would, it would have been better if it was like, fleshed out longer. In the second season, they do a lot of that, like they do a lot of the stress putting on, and when they're in the Southern Water Tribe dealing with the spirits, yes. they do a lot of that, and then they pace it so poorly. It feels. Yeah, and it's, and I think it's the pacing and shit because but like the third and fourth season or the third and fourth book, I think are done really well. I just, <sighs> or is it? Yeah, it's four books, right? Yeah. No, definitely the third and fourth seasons they did, they did things well and whatnot. But I think the damage was already done fair, because fair. you wrote this. First of all, I just think the cockiness of the character was turning out a lot of really? people. Really? Was oh, that's the, that's her, one of her most endearing features. I think <sighs> it's the it's the character growth that happens over time as she slowly becomes more and more traumatized and whittles down into an actual uh, like manageable hero. I just think that what's called. If they switched arcs, maybe you start with like the whole spirit thing and stuff like that. Maybe you rewrite how you're gonna like do like enter mm-hmm. that. That would have been a really strong point. The fact that she was super cocky in the beginning and now like all of a sudden like the world doesn't need an avatar, like you know, right? So like it was super hard for like people to get like people like me to get involved because like if the world's already in peace, then why are you here? I get you. I get you. That's you fair. Know? 
I don't know. I think they have some real. I think it's just they have really good character moments in Korra. Like the oh, vi- he, like the incredible. ending of season one, Amon's death. Probably one of my favorite, mo- like favorite subversions. If there's one of show that has like genuinely good side characters, that show. That is very. Uh, the I've Avatar writers it. are really good at that. Well, you haven't seen Korra. No. You have, have you seen Avatar? No. That's oh, kick goddamn ass right now. I don't even know how I never got into it. Uh, like it seems like something I would love. Those, no, no, no. It was one of those things where like if you had cable. This was the show. Yeah, see, I, I didn't have cable. That's exactly, very yeah. fair, I guess. I got, I got caught up way later in life when it came to the... Actually, no. I, I watched it as it released. Yeah, I, I did too. Yeah, now I remember. Yeah, I'll have to, I'll have to get into it because it's definitely something I know I'll like. Mm-hmm. Cora, I came back and watched oh, years one? later. Like, because they, they stopped releasing it on... They took that huge break between season two and three, I think. And that's what made it so, like, two different mm-hmm. stories. But it's where, because like, they it, kept saying, we're going to cancel you. We're going to cancel you at the end of every season. They're like, we're canceling were like, you. People like were upset because like, oh she's bi that's weird. Well, and back shit. you gotta remember back then. You gotta remember back then when when that did come out. That was like a huge deal. That was mm. that was like set eight nine years ago. And okay, I'm gonna be <laughs> looking at her. You know, I mean, yeah, you could tell. You you can tell from the from the get go if if you really know it. But back then, people didn't have that kind of thing. People weren't used to seeing people like that. So they're just like, she's just a muscular woman. It makes sense. And which. is... I, but like no, like people like were upset and shit. I'm like, why are y'all upset, dog? Like why? You think that like <laughs> mo- like half the monks back in the day, like shell and monks were sometimes gay. Like it's not no. It, there, what's a lot of them were celibate. I know, but that doesn't mean they couldn't be gay. Like that doesn't mean that they did, weren't originally attracted to men before they went through their journey. Some of them went to monkhood because of they thought their uh, attraction to men was weird. Really? Mm-hmm. That's interesting. I, my roommate's a historian, so I get a lot of weird facts from, no. from history. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's great because I learned so much. I won't learn because I don't have classes, so it's like this is the only place I learned <laughs> my information. Uh, I've learned so much about the Roman Empire. It's unbelievable. God. <laughs> Rome was weird, dog. <laughs> Anything like legit, like while in Rome, like when sure. in Rome, you just said shit. Goes, um, bro. so niche cartoon that showed up on Cartoon Network in the hours of four to five a.m. Oh. Did you guys ever hear about the show, The Secret Show? Now I understand why you wouldn't hear of it because called, called The Secret Show. Oh, homie, it was not a secret. But you, you saw it. I wish I could. Thank have fuck! I have never met somebody else who has seen this show before. I feel like I. I feel like you have to jog my memory. Yeah, you okay. have to jog my memory. I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna pull something. I know the I know the name 100. percent But this is one of my favorite things that would come on in the middle of the night because it's so absurd every episode. Hold on. So real quick, can we appreciate McDonald's new logo? What is that? Is that real? <laughs> yeah. No, That's, it's not. Yeah. That's not real. There's no way from You're as from shit. a design standpoint You're that is just. Disgu- That's McDonald's official Facebook image. And there's no end McDonald's. <laughs> I want to see them go for it. I want to see them go through that full cycle because if it's on their Facebook account, either the social media manager did it or it's a genuine company joke. I think it's like a TikTok thing. It, I hope so. What TikTok trend is? Oh, you know what? It's from that one chick on TikTok who redoes uh, companies' logos. She's been trending right now. Oh so yeah, she's she just makes them all fucking. So they're just girly. they're just endorsing her now. Probably. Wow. That's that's actually really funny. Like I won't lie. Um, here we go. Secret Show theme song. So here, I'm gonna pull it up right here. Yeah, this show was fucking yep. weird. Yeah, yeah. Yep. See, I loved this show. It it, it was so stupid, but it, it had some of the best like, like like it always started by throwing this old woman out of her own show set, which I thought was hilarious because you know it, it's an old person and you're stealing what she owns, um, but. Uh, the show just had like a sp- specific kind of comedy that I really liked, and the fact that nobody I ever spoke to had ever heard of it bothered me so much. You were all <laughs> like, "Did this show actually exist?" Yes, yeah. because for the longest time, I was like, "I I can't explain these to anybody because the jokes don't make sense out of context." It was very physical animation style humor. It it was uh, it was something I could you only talk about. With something you saw. had to be there for. Happy Tree Friends. Yes, I missed the wave on this. I remember being around friends as they described it and watched it together, but I didn't know about I it. So please regale me it? with the story of hey, Happy You just had to be there. There's no way to describe it. Had to be there. You're going to look it up, Ryan? That was what? Second, it doesn't matter. Second, second now, third grade? You're right? going to look it up now expecting and something. Back when it came out, we didn't expect that. Well, it was a yeah. Netflix-sanctioned show, right? Yeah. Well, what's it called back when like Netflix um, like was like starting out and shit, they had, por- they had like porn on their fucking like 
Uh, oh, yeah. Really? Yeah, they did. Still, I trust no. They still basically have softcore porn in a lot of their originals, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But that, that one is and Lars like von Trier puts legitimate porn in his movies that are on Netflix, so you could find pornography on Netflix if you wanted. A lot of their shows are soup, like, a lot, like, you know. I feel like people, what's the word? With like when it comes to like po- like super popular like sexual shows, it's just people who are like oh like it's like you know sexuality and being open about it and shit. I'm like yeah, like sex. Yeah, sex but education. like there's there's a is the, oh there's, there's a time actual employee. sex and sex education. Oh yeah, you wouldn't believe it. Right? <laughs> see the original, I showed up to class see, and we just all just fucking just sat the there. The weirdest and thing shit is right. See the original banana. sex education show that came out before this one way back when, um, which I think if you look up on YouTube, sex education, uh, I think it's. P, uh, the safe word is popcorn, or is like P is for popcorn. Huh? Is one of the episodes. <laughs> um, that's that's episode mm. two, I think, uh, of the old series. And that show was actually really interesting in the way that they tackled it, because uh, if if I if and going off memory here, the first task this teacher assigns them in the sex education class, and I don't know if this is anywhere related to mm-hmm. the new show based on the plot, but uh, she makes them pair up, and you have to sculpt each other's genitals. And that is the first episode, and so it tackles like them on this and like the different ways they all handle it. And then the end of the episode, she's hmm. like, "Well, there's more than there's more than one way, more than one way to expose yourself to somebody and get to know each other." And I think it's fucking hilarious because all of their different plans. There's like Hold a on, bunch of different is... Degrassi side stories where like one guy's religious, so he doesn't want to do it, and there's like uh, he doesn't want to have sex before marriage, so he doesn't want to even. Do those the people project. are just generally fun to be around, right? <laughs> and then there's this sh- there's like uh, these two ch- uh, chicks who do who have a strategy where they put a mirror in opposite sides so they don't have to look at each other, and it's like there's just a bunch of weird, interesting things about it. And I have no idea if that has anything to do with the show. It's just something I really need to get off my chest because just like the secret show, it's a show <laughs> nobody else has seen. <laughs> I just. <laughs> I always perused like strange media. I guess. Did you guys ever see the show Chaotic as a kid? Oh, the card what? game, the dude, card battle. I remember we sat up one night and watched like, a little bit of it. Dude, but dude. Chaotic was fire, yeah. dude. That is one of the greatest concepts for a game, and I'm so, I'm so pissed. The dialogue they won't make the, a VR version. I'm, I really want. Them I hate to. the fact that the dialogue in there is so bad. But I keep fucking watching. I don't it. think the dialogue's that cringy, to be honest. Dude, what? No, like go back to like before they start doing the 3D shit, bro. Their dialogue is like legit bad. Well, I mean, the four kids version has some bad dialogue. The Disney XD version is a little in, better. Yeah, well, the, what's called the Disney XD version took on like the. Like the whole things were like the overworld was like what's or like Param basic was in, was uh, basically like to it. like a met like fictional racism was going on and shit like and just it being super open was just kind of weird. Um, the main villain of or the main the head of the underworld in chaotic him K-or he's was a, not Kr there's one there's one above Kr the huh? magician. No, 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 sorry, no. I guess they're like right. Next no, to Kr's the king of the underworld. So then, uh, what's his name? The 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 wizard. Oh no, he's overworld overworld. Uh, Merlin? No, no, not Merlin. Like the evil wizard, like the guy who can who has the wings. That's like a he's, girl. That's a girl. That's a girl. No, no, not talking him. That's like I'm talking about like the dead looking wizard from the sure, other. I, I don't know. So like he's one of the main evil wizard or whatever the fuck. He's Merlin's Wizards. equivalent, I guess. I would call it. Um, but he scared the shit out of me as a kid. He's the guy who uh, cursed Maxor to lose his powers. Oh. That guy scared the shit out of me as I a kid. I see why. Yeah, he was he had terrifying design. I think that shows why I like monster designs nowadays. Okay, how about this best looking monster, or what's it like best villain from like a kids TV show? <sighs> See, Jimmy's mom. <laughs> Jimmy was, Neutron she was, a menace was a, to the streets. <laughs> Jimmy Neutron was a fire show. I love Jimmy Neutron. It and was the movie so was so good. good. From like the whole show. From oh the- yeah, the movie was surprising. Like look, I like. Again, it's a t- kids t- like movie and shit, but like that one is like. Yeah. Do you remember the hour long special where they go to do a, uh, a alien Cross. trivia show? Yeah. Neutron, which is basically and it starts like, with them infiltrating the U.S. government yeah. to study a obelisk. <laughs> but no, no, isn't it like isn't it weird? It, like what that episode was basically what anime does when like the season ender is about to do it, so they do a recap of what's happening. It was just basically that, wasn't it? Jimmy Neutron Kinda. is anime confirmed. It was really good, though. Oh I God. really liked it. Like, it was it was genuinely... Like, Jimmy Neutron started getting really good, and then... Did, have Dude, I told don't you even guys, tell me. Jimmy, have Timmy, I told you power this, hour, dog. Have I, guys, have I told you guys this tragic story of the death of Jimmy Neutron? Have I? Have you Have I regaled you with the tale, the tragedy of, of Jimmy Neutron? The wise. What the fuck? 
Okay, yeah, no, go for it. <laughs> so, so, so mid two thousands, right? Right. This the big, Palpatine the big, moment. the big cartoon, the big cartoon arguments are going back and forth between you know D- DreamWorks and Disney at the time. They're going back and forth in the movie world, right? Yeah. And cartoons, you know, are prospering, doing really well. Nickelodeon's at what I would argue is its golden age of cartoons before Nicktoons separated from Nickelodeon. There was this, there was, there was this, there was this company called DreamWorks, who saw that Disney was setting out to make a movie called A Bug's Life. And they said, uh, actually, it wasn't DreamWorks, actually. It was a company uh, alongside DreamWorks. But DreamWorks also made their own whatever the fuck they made at the Ants. time. Ants. No, no. Ants was not a DreamWorks movie, was it? Yeah, it was. It was. Well, okay, so then I, I am. It is DreamWorks. So the no, studio, I love Ants. Ants is actually so incredibly DreamWorks more based decided to make, to make uh, Ants to counter Disney's Bugs Life. The decision was so poor, and the reception to Ants was so bad, that the company that was in charge of Jimmy Neutron, who was hired on to help DreamWorks with Ants... The animation for the movie went bankrupt. The, the The company had to shut down and stop production on Jimmy Neutron because of a fucking ant movie. Yep. And guess what? A couple years later, another company releases the movie Ant Bully and trumps both of those movies significantly. Which is, and that movie sucks. I think Ant Bully's really good. I hate that movie. It angers I, me. Yeah. It, I think you know, it, it has moments. Bugs Life too. I, Fuck I, Bugs Life. Ant, ant Bully is written really well. It, some of the, like, comedy in that movie still slaps but just the overall movie angers me that that is totally fair and yeah. the i hate the exterminator and anything to do with him but the 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 game that released alongside the yeah. movie yes. there we go yeah. <laughs> now we're talking if there's a movie based games that's fucking fire it's that, that was the era where they were just making banger games for movie releases Spider-Man over the hedge 3 for the ps3 over the now. hedge had a phenomenal game as well you can't even find over the hedge now can you not? You can't. No. Like it's oh. because like it's becomes like super fucking scarce and shit. And you could probably crazy. find some, but like for like definitely for now what it's worth. I now. have the PS2 disc just sitting at home somewhere. It's it was an amazing game. That and the Madagascar video game was also yeah. really good. The first one, not the second okay. one. <laughs> I was gonna the say. first one had like shuffleboard, mini golf, all these mini games in between every like level. So, uh, such a good way to get a kid interested because we would just hop on the game and play shuffleboard. Dude. I just would, what's that, when I was a kid, I just would just look at the covers of the games. I'm like, that looks cool. I'll buy that one. That's how I bought Tack and the Power of Juju, and that was one of the worst decisions I ever made. <sighs> that and the El Tigre game, because I liked it. Cartoon-based video games was the greatest way to get me to spend money as a kid, because I bought the El Tigre game, because I liked El Tigre, and it was such a shit game. The think, game was so poorly done. I think the best game I played as a kid that I would like uh, honestly like buy again would be Sp- uh, Spongebob Battle for Bikini Battle for Bikini Bottom THQ Nordic who are also making another Spongebob game that comes out in a, co- in a like a year yeah. the Cosmic Break or whatever oh, they just God. know how to work Spongebob THQ give me my Smackdown versus Raw remakes already actually God, THQ yeah. needs to get on Spongebob Lights Camera Pants remaster <laughs> that's the other game I, nah I don't think that one really I, as much as I love that game it's, shit. it's a party game which is why I think it's got more longevity yeah, that's true. It's better to play with friends, but um. But like, I don't think they would like. That's not. It doesn't. You know, I don't think it conjures, or what's the what's the word? I don't think it deserves a remake for like that reason though too. I guess because like guess. party games like now are not like what they used to be. They're just not popular in general and shit. It's they're not hard to like, get people together. You need online. Not, what's like not even like get people together, but like if you look at like games like Jackbox Party and stuff like that, you. Like those games are geared toward like they are geared towards gamers. Mm-hmm. These I've are games that you to play, play with other people like while. willingly and shit. You know, yeah. and, and there's just like there's not a lot of games that do good. Like Mario, Mario Kart isn't as popular as it used to be, and like yeah. that's why the Wii was such a revolutionary. Which was like which. I don't know why like they keep making Mario parties. My question is, who's buying all these fucking Mario party games? They're you know Nintendo. Well, Nintendo's dogs. a closed system. So they'll just make whatever because people are gonna buy it. Yeah, but like that's the thing. Like, what's ever, like what's I want to like sit down. Like, what's up? you guys heard of video game donkey? Yeah. I want to like sit down with like someone who's a fan of Nintendo and just ask you why. Uh, Alpha Rad would be a good person to ask, I believe. It's like he seems to be the Nintendo content creator, from what I can tell. I He's just I don't know, man. Like Nintendo doesn't have like all the only appealing game I feel like uh, like they have is like either the Pokemon? Metroids. No, not this Pokemon. Not, no, not, not but Sword Pokemon as a series. Yeah, Pokemon as a series, they have about like eight out of. I would argue they have eight out of ten, or like a, like a solid eight out of ten for the majority of their games. Did so, you guys watch the Pokemon anime as a kid? No, no. Uh, the Johto region. 
the one where they had May. May is uh, the girl. Hoen. Yeah, Hoen. <laughs> Ash out here hoeing around, dog. My question is, how is the fact that Ash like will leave these girls and then they grow up, but like Ash is like the same and shit? Ash has some weird like he he has that Pokemon ability where he's he he has like a hidden hidden ability where it just keeps him young and everybody within like passive. a five foot radius. <laughs> he's got a passive healing buff. Oh my god, that's fucking hilarious. Yeah, I just. <sighs> Do you guys have like a cartoon that sticks out as like a favorite from your childhood? Like Shit. the 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 devout favorite, I think when it came to music, Oliver and Company was a really good Disney movie. Fair, okay. If you guys haven't seen that, anyone who has never seen that, I generally like challenge you to I go think watch I've it. You'll have a good time twice. watching it too. It has all it has all the th- it has all the makings of the feel goods. Fair, fair. What about you, Carlos? Probably Courage, the Cowardly Dog. Courage, the Cowardly Dog. That's a good one. You know what? You just Honestly, Invader Zim would be mine. Though. Yeah. Okay, what's up? We're gonna talk about most <laughs> hilarious dialogue. It's that fucking show. Courage, courage scared the absolute shit out of me as a kid. I don't know, like, what's, I'm genuinely curious on how, like, who at Cartoon Network said Green this is okay. This? There are some scenes in that show that live in my head forever. No, like, there's a lot of space for like what's like they live rent free in my head. The uh, the one That's where how he opens the door and it's just a ghost guy like saying return the whatever yeah. the fuck. Yeah. That guy sti- like exists in my brain. I don't like it. I don't like any <laughs> of those guys and shit. And like that room with just the soul computer and shit. Actually, there's a lot of allegories and like a lot of symbolism and stuff in that show. Really, is it yeah. representative of a lot of like old folk tales and stuff? That's what well, I hear. Like so, biblical tales. Folk so there's tales, a lot of different like things. So the reason why Courage is super scared of like things coming from the outside is because if you look at like dogs and shit. Oh, dogs he, are supposed to be able to see like spirits and stuff, right? Not, is that well, the joke? Not even that. Um, what's called because Eustace and. Um, Muriel. Muriel. They live out in, out in the middle of nowhere. They're an old couple. They don't get out very often. So the dog, all of these apparitions and stuff could just be people that the dog is seeing for the first time. Ah. Uh, so fair. it's like, I don't know who you are. I don't know what you... crocodile? Bat- How do you explain <laughs> bath dumb crocodile? Well, no, but like, also the thing is, um, with that show though too, um, apparently there's like this thing where, um, like the dog got into like the medication of like the of like of the couple and stuff. Gotcha. And is like starting to experience all this stuff. But even like that that room with the with the computer, that's supposed to be symbolizing how people uh, filter in their information and shit. How sometimes because you remember that like sometimes the computer would be wrong. It said, "Oh well, you're shit out of luck. My, like <laughs> it's not my fault. It's your fault. You know, because you didn't use the information adequately." Like that was like that was the symbolism of how like and. Fucking think about it now, like that's the fucking just symbolizes like a whole lot of shit about how it like tells about our society and whatnot. I think I have to go back and watch more of that. They recently did a collab with Scooby Doo, right? Yeah. Like the movie just came out. I think that's long. (laughs) Yes, let's put two of the biggest bitches together. I cannot believe that they took them this long to do a Courage collab. If the Harlem Globetrotters got collabed with in two thousand like six, yeah. (sighs) Scooby Doo was already heading towards the Harlem Globetrotters. (laughs) (laughs) Like, (laughs) do you know? Scooby Doo, there are some legitimate fucking episodes that are scary as shit. Mm-hmm. I love, I loved the ones that just don't that make no sense when you get to the ending. It's yeah. like, remember, it, 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 it was this guy, or was it really? And it's like, what's called? Remember, they never pick it up. It was your mom. <laughs> there was a what's called? Speaking of villains and stuff, there's one villain that I always remember from Scooby Doo, and it's back when like it was. And this episode was weird. It was like a spinoff show, but it was just like Shaggy and Daphne. Uh, like you know, Scrappy Doo and Scooby and his retarded white cousin. Um, that's canon. It's, it's it's just a dog that's white and his stickish. Oh, huh, huh, I'm retarded. There is no way that's a. There's thing. no way that's. There a thing. is, dude. It is, and the reason why I remember mm-hmm. is because now I'm thinking about it, like fucking, it's just Shaggy and Daphne. Shaggy gets to finally fuck. <laughs> you know, so props to my dude. Secondly, um, <laughs> mentally challenged white dog Scooby Doo. So no, there's this. What's up? There's this episode. Look at the Scooby Doo. Oh my god! <laughs> yes. This is a character. <laughs> Scooby Dumb. Let's see here. 
He is general. He has a generally dim-witted demeanor. He is also illiterate and canonically can't count. <laughs> he's past the best eight. <laughs> he's the redneck version. <laughs> he's Scoo- the Scooby Dum's foolishness sometimes gives him greater access to tune physics than the others, allowing him to save the day when nothing else will work. For example, the gang was trapped in a locked tomb, and the only way out was to reach the ceiling. They built a human tower, but it wasn't high enough. Scooby Dum at the bottom of the tower simply pulled himself out of place and scrambled up to the top. His ignorance of the laws of gravity thus <laughs> saved them all. <laughs> so, what's all, so there's this episode where like it's it's all these characters and like this they're visiting like they're visiting a hotel like in Transylvania or some shit. <laughs> you didn't think this guy was real? <laughs> In why is Scooby Doo so dumb? Or is in, in why is Scooby Dum so dumb? And dumb dumb dumb, Scooby Dum lives in Dumville. <laughs> <laughs> this is a real character with a legitimate backstory, oh ladies and God. gentlemen. So no, the episode is just these guys. They go visit a hotel in Transylvania. Interesting. Yeah. No relation. And then like, in what's Dumbville. the word? Like they just, dude. It's like the most creepiest fucking episode from the music to like. It has all the dude, bro. If I what's like, if you like put a couple filters on it, it looks like a fucking James Wan film. Not malignant, but um, <laughs> fucking malignant. I forgot we watched that movie too. Bullshit. You guys have seen a lot of movies lately, huh? HBO Max, my guy. Gotcha. It's worth it's. What's like in the in the days of streaming now? Oh my god, is it worth it to like have these platforms? Oh no, I have all of them. There there would be no reason not to. Except for the stupid ones like Amazon Prime. I think Video if we're gonna stuff. say, if I'm gonna say anything about that movie, if anyone's really all that interested in seeing it, just don't go into it with expectations. Go in with an open mind. Know that it's a brand new movie for this producer, um, but just be just have an open mind when you go see this. Mm-hmm. Let's run a gauntlet for 15, 20 more minutes, and then we'll do a quick. Uh, it shouldn't take that long to go to the drive. Um, yeah. So really quickly, let's go through it. Shows that popped up in uh, that, that need, okay, shows that need to be coded. Uh, SpongeBob need to be. Need, f- how do you guys feel about Fairly Odd Parents? No, no complaints. I think it's gone on too long. Homie, they said the N word in that show. They <laughs> I, I, I think it's gone on too long. Yeah, I, I agree. think as soon as the dog was added, I think it should have ended there. As soon as the baby was added, it should have. Timmy been. Turner. Poof, poof was fine all the way up until th- once the dog showed up, that's when the show started getting weird. No, as soon as the girl showed up. It well, the girl came after the dog. And what? They, yeah. No. Uh huh. The no. dog's been around for a couple seasons. Are you sure? Yeah. I swear the girl showed up first before the dog. No, because they changed the theme song for the girl. They didn't change the theme song for the dog. Gotcha. When they give Timmy Turner his schizo meds and his friends Costco and Windex disappear. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Jeez. Um. <laughs> Um, here's a random one I'm gonna throw out. Came on after Lazy Town, Miss Spider's Sunny Patch Friends. What the f- <laughs> All right, cool. I just added myself. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. Other shows that came on around that time. Um, Peppa Pig. Danny Phantom was really nice Danny when it Phantom's came out. Good. Really well written. I am a sh- it's a shame they ended it where they did. Mm-hmm. They weren't supposed to, Boy, it was just to, Danny right? Phantom. They weren't supposed to end it where it did, right? No, no, yeah, they, they ended there where they were supposed the, to. Well, they ended it, they made the finale, but I think they ended early, right? I think they were no. supposed to continue. No, but Hartman, what's it called? But Hartman, like, when it ended, it ended. Yeah, but I thought they ended it because it got canceled. Like, they canceled it when they oh, had a season they left. No, what's it? No, it really? Because I thought they jumped they the gun with future Danny and all that. That was supposed to they take a lot did, longer. They did, but, like, well, it's like, I wouldn't say they got canceled. They just didn't do as well. They just kind of just ended it. That there. is a real shame, because I know they had some great ideas. But Hartman was... Is, uh, and they like threw the them all into the future Danny episode, like all of those ideas, like his ghost roar and all that. Like he had so much yeah. more to go with. Yeah, he that had show a, had potential. They could, like they could have done like a Spider Man verse. Type literally, thing for Danny fam, that would have like worked out. Really and it would have well. made so much sense because it's you could literally go anywhere in the ghost world. No, what's it like Nickelodeon? Butch Hartman, like they like. No, they, Butch Hartman's a hack, dude. We say that, but he's like responsible for a lot of our travels. No, he's not. What? All the other artists did that. All Butch Hartman Fair, is, what's all, all, Butch Hartman is responsible for uh, account, multiple accounts of tracing as well as being a, being a general nuisance to the Nickelodeon cast. So much so that a couple of, of the uh, animators and writers have been on book saying that they would uh, they would uh, draw their uh, their little scenes yeah. so complex and difficult that Butch couldn't mess with them to ruin the episodes. Wow. He recently had a big controversy for copying a random Twitter user's uh, drawing as a trace. 
And that is when I found out all that information. So it really upset me because he seemed like such a good person. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Tough Puppy It was uh, Butch Hartman at his finest. Oh, God. And we remember how some of those characters were designed. Yeah, but, like, when you look at, like, his... That art style is, like, is his. Yeah. And shit. Right. You know, and it was used across, like, all platforms. Like, a ton of different shows. So as much as we, like, people want to say, like... Like, Homeboy made a, uh, like, made a shit ton of money off of, he like, so the system. many, he like, definitely so many different the shows. System, and he did a really good job in doing so. Um, other cartoons that I feel like... Class of 3000 needs to be goaded for the one season it was at. I feel like I don't know what you're talking about. <gasps> well, this okay, is before you guys' time, <laughs> to be quite honest. Class, Class of 3000? It was a show it on Cartoon familiar. Network. Um, the whole gimmick was Andre 3000 from Outcast was, like, their music Was it teacher. live action? No, 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 it was cartoon. 2D. Okay. Just look it up. Class well, of 3000. Did it, te- it was like a, cla- a class that got, like, it was, it was one of those lesson of the day type shows. Mm, no? Not really. It was. It was Hood Magic School Bus. Yes. Yeah. There we go. Yes. <laughs> and it's like, what's wrong? I was starting to revisit that show. There's just one episode where all the kids say, oh, go on and rap for us, Mr. 3000, or whatever his fucking thing is. Oh my god, if I was a kid in that class and I was just fucking just ripped <laughs> and hearing him spit. If you were a child in class uh, their age ripped, I don't think they're I don't think things would go over so well. I don't know, it was the hood, so who knows? Those kids were probably already tripping. Yeah. <laughs> but like he's like he's spitting. It's uh, like it's just Andre three thousand in cartoon form. Fire. <laughs> Fire. See, that feels strange, but for the time, that was totally normal. You know normal. what's weird? I just want to throw this in just to cause chaos. Chowder. Why not? Chowder? Chowder had, yeah. See, Chowder, I never liked from a comedic standpoint, but from an animation and visual standpoint, yeah, the way they the, the way fabric. the characters moved, but the, the design stayed mm-hmm. in place is one of my favorite things. Yeah. It's so cool to me because it's it's a really rider, cool rider, visual rider, game. Rider, rider. Um, were Chowder and uh, Flap, Flapjack? Was it? Were they the same? They were the same time. Was well, Class Three Thousand, Chowder. Uh, I think they all came out within like the same. Were like, they? Time but span. were Chowder and Flapjack the same animation studio? Yeah, they, I can't. I can't they stand. Looked I, very I can't stand Flapjack. There is one specific video from Flapjack uh-huh. uh, of a dog doing a backflip and the ear rape that follows <laughs> that I remember <laughs> per, perpetuates the group. My, one of my <laughs> old group chats, and Don't I guarantee you, if, right I, if I sent them a meme. If I sent them that exact video now, it would still kill all five of them because it's just so funny <laughs> for no reason. It's, it's going to take more than that to impress me. And then the dog does it. It's just so stupid. I just... There, yep, that's well, the see, one. Let me see it. You might have flap and the rich lady under your spell, but it's, it's going to take more than that to impress me. <laughs> it's just so stupid. <laughs> that show um, was like their depiction of like their faces and shit. They took the SpongeBob uh, Gork uh, Gork yeah, close-ups. I guess I can't. It was like it's just too. It's just too gross for me. I think Flat they took deck. it from SpongeBob, right? Because SpongeBob stopped doing it after a while. Yeah, because like that was like one of like, the, the, like, the gross like, out long running like, like the what they call jokes. gross-ups. Yeah, I don't. Know. <laughs> Flapjack was just way too, too much. Yeah. I don't know. It I really like, didn't like it. It was gross for the sake of being gross. Yeah. And it didn't play well with a lot of people. And that's the reason why it only lasted that's like, why what, I don't two like, seasons? That's why I don't like cartoons nowadays like Big Mouth. I feel like those are the ones that are See, too Big much Ma- for too so much Big Mouth. Sake. It's, it's written by great comedians. It's just not. Big Mouth disappoints me because it's, it, you're, you're right, it has so many great minds behind it, a lot of talent, and it's. I think it's. It's so pervasively stupid that I can't wrap my head around why it's popular. Mm-hmm. Also with the fact that it is, it really bothers me that these situations are all involving children in the show, which I understand what they're getting at. And I understand if there's anything like the, the hormone monster and those kind of tropes, I really like that. I really like those kind of things. Those seem really creative to me. But it could be done tastefully. It could be done tastefully. I feel like anything involving like the actual human characters that are children, really bothers me i just uh, really? and the implications of it really just irk me especially knowing where it comes from and knowing that it comes from a studio system and a hollywood system it really bothers me and i'm like the, a- the fact that they write this and they like because then they make the argument okay what about south park and i'm like south That's park the only reason though. south park is <laughs> different is because south park is so 
fantastically funny. crazy. <laughs> well, it is funny, but it's so like but crazy like, and out of this world that there's like there's absolutely no way this could be grounded in reality, right? Big Mouth at the same time, yeah, the animation style makes you realize this is not realistic at all. But then you see that these kids are in very realistic situations that we went through growing up, and it's being portrayed in such a. I mean, I didn't talk like that when I was a kid. But yeah, like that's like what, what like the sight of like the like those kids in Big Mouth. Yeah, like, but like that's uh, give the me comed- an example. Like what's like when they're like no like there's like there's plenty of scenes and shit where like these girls and shit who are played by like dudes or like mm-hmm. grown ass women are talking just but in the like uh, school like hallway just about getting railed and shit. Yeah, that but I feel like that's when that's like that's when people Not are. When I was like twelve. But like that's <laughs> that's besides the Uh-oh. point. But like, out of Adam's <laughs> again. but no, like I just feel like that's when people start peering into it too much because i feel like you can over like you know there's things that like you can just like it wasn't a common occurrence but i feel like it's common enough to be talked about in a tv show that covers that topic yeah, i just like, feel like they did they do it poorly i feel yeah. like it could be done so much i think the art style also has a huge part to do with it mm-hmm. in the fact that it almost looks like they're purposely going for grotesque imagery right i mean yeah because they're making fun of like these situations as we grow up as kids and stuff and i feel like and i'm not gonna lie yes there's are a couple of times where like you know, in the context of them being kids and shit, you know, but like that's that's. I joke. feel like there's a lot of parts where it goes too far, and, and, that's, I, and but I like think that's, that's all subjective. Though it's funny though because yeah, South no, Park, South Park repeatedly crosses the line, and I oh, have like, never the... looked at a South Park joke besides like the shit and piss jokes and gone, that's not funny because they're all hilarious usually. But that's the thing. Like I feel like that the was like my 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 biggest gripe with like the whole comparison to South Park and Big Mouth, like. South Park is just chaos. Mm-hmm. There's like, there's not a whole lot of things that they're trying to portray the or like. Where they climb to heaven on a ladder, <laughs> and they decide, and then America Bro, decides. They to did the nuke one thing in like the Muslim culture, like you don't do. They drew the fucking Allah thing, or like they made the jokes about about like all that shit. They don't fucking care. South but, like, Park's goaded. I'm proud of them. I'm glad they're still here. Oh no, yeah. And I hope they continue to carry on for quite some time. But like we know when like people like with like shows like Big Mouth, like I said, agree with <gasps> you with like the grotesque mm-hmm. shit. Um, but as far as that, like, you know, like it, it, like that's the joke. Yeah. You know, we're going to take a huge dive into a different corner of cartoons for four minutes. Did you guys ever watch VeggieTales? Yeah. I didn't like it. I fucking loved VeggieTales. VeggieTales is great. I'm out. I'm out. (laughs) Have you ever seen just nine minutes of VeggieTales out of context? I think I have actually. Help. I've fallen and I can't get up. Wow. That's terrible. In other news, <laughs> <laughs> the show is so good when you if you if you ignore the propaganda, it is so well written. It is. Just, it's like it, it does such a good job. And I want desperately to do a video where I where I rank all the VeggieTales videos, mm-hmm. but I could not or the VeggieTales shows and movies, but I could not bring myself to watch the entire show again. Nah. The, Skip, anytime I'm, that fucking baby asparagus pops up, I want to rip my eyes out. Yeah. But I don't most, know. Most most uh, like I could just watch like Star of Christmas bits. slaps though. <laughs> He's like, "Am I getting out of this?" Uh, actually, it, 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 uh, it's like it <laughs> seems like they're gonna sell you up the river. <laughs> 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 that's like a genuine line. That's and you just go and like you. See, it pans to his face, and you just watch this squash accept the fact that he's gonna die. Like, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> like I think they gave him the death penalty in this movie. I don't know. Star of Christmas. It's a great episode. Coming but, in twenty twenty two. Veggie Tales. <laughs> the newer Veggie Tales, not so much, but. Um, I'm sure we will have plenty more of the cartoons to pick back up on in the future. Yeah. But we wanted to just do a nice touch on, and it's great to be back and getting to official serial production again here every Wednesday at the Morning Madness podcast. Without further ado, thank you for tuning into our chaotic mess. <laughs> <laughs> and we will see you guys. Oh, we forgot to plug. All right, let's go. Shit. TJ, do you want to go ahead and do your plugs first? Um, follow, what's the, what's the word? Follow the Dixie State Esports Club at Dixie State Esports. I'm their coordinator, so I feel like I had to, like, shout that out real quick. Um, also, Venom season's still in the works. We're still trying to get that shit done. Don't worry about it. Uh, follow me at TJ, T-E-E-J-A-Y, Tutasi, Tutasi <laughs> on Instagram for whatever bullshit I'm up to. Um, super image. <laughs> Super Image LTD, LTD Carlos. Uh, Shout out to my boy Biggie. 
You guys, yeah, what's up? I'm surprised, yeah. you guys, I'm surprised you guys haven't noticed the jersey I'm wearing. It's a fire jersey. It's pretty I thought nice. it was part of the hoodie. I won't lie. Yeah, I thought it was a hoodie. Oh, no, no I'm fucking sweating through this thing and shit. But no, no it's, it it's, does look no, nice. It's uh, big, smalls, and shit. Yeah. It's, it's it's fire. Fire. Might have Shout to steal out. that off you in a minute. All right, go for it, Carl. Uh, intentional over. underscore lens underscore flare. You can see all my shite up there. Oh, okay. Well, and then I guess you can find the video version of this podcast at Victory TGH on YouTube. You can also find my content on YouTube and Twitch at Victory TGH. Same with Twitter and Instagram to find updates on what I am currently doing and my behind the scenes information, as well as TikTok now at Victory TGH, where you'll probably see a couple of these clips from this episode. So, without you further ado, for our video? thank you so much for waking up with us, and we will see you guys next week on the Morning Madness podcast. Later. See ya.